Oh, hello! Today we are going to talk about what I am reading right now. And it has been, I think, a pretty good reading month so far. It's felt a little scattered because I took a big road trip earlier this month to DC, family trip, showing my nieces all of the museums and, you know, landmarks, etc. So that was a fun trip, uh, but, you know, long road trip. I did listen to a little bit of audiobook, not as much as I was hoping, uh, and you will see some footage from that in my Black Aweenathon vlog, which I think will come next weekend. So that took up a lot of my time, but I have read a lot of things that I enjoyed, so we can talk about those. We'll talk about what I've read, what I'm currently reading, and what I might read next. So in terms of what I've already read, you can actually see quite quite a bit of what I've already read in videos that are already up. So, okay, and I feel a little weird doing this, but I've got to tell you, YouTube has hosed me in the algorithm since I had my failed shorts experiment. Like, it has been struggles, and I feel like people didn't see these videos, and I actually really liked both of them. Like, they're some of the favorite ones I've made this year. So, I did a monster romance vlog uh, that I thought was really fun, and people who watched it said they thought it was funny. Um, so I'll just refer you there. But I read two books in October for that. I read A Soul to Keep by Opal Rain, which is so much. Basically, imagine if dude from, I think it's called The Ancient Magus Bride, that manga series, if he was a fantasy romance hero and had very interesting private areas that came into play during the sexy times. So that, the concept of that was really fun. I didn't love the characters and the plot. I felt like it was too stretched out, but the concept is really cool and interesting. So I read that and then I also read Flores Fiasco by Ruby Dixon, which, you know, Queen Ruby. And this was such a good entry in terms of the macro plot because all of her sci-fi books are in the same universe. So it's interesting just to see how different things kind of came together in that book. I really liked it. So those are in my monster romance vlog. And then the other one that is <laughs> not necessarily doing very well, but again, I felt like this was a cool concept. And those of you who watched it said that you'd like to see me do this again. I would also like to do it again. Hopefully it'll catch on a little bit more. But I did a try an author video where I tried three books from Attica Locke, who I've not read anything from before, and basically just like gave you some book reviews and also just like my feelings about sort of what her deal is. That feels weird, but <laughs> what her project is. Uh, so I read Bluebird, Bluebird, I read Blackwater Rising, and I read The Cutting Season. I would say The Cutting Season was definitely my favorite. I gave this four stars and these both three and a half. And Hastings is here to start rubbing on the tripod, so ready for me to move around a little bit. But Cutting Season is the closest thing to like a traditional mystery thriller. Try to stabilize this for you. It's the closest thing to an actual traditional mystery thriller, I think. Um, and therefore it was my favorite. Her writing is lovely. She just has more of a noir tone to what she does than tends to be what I usually am looking for. So therefore it's not, like her project is not necessarily a go-to for me, but if I am in the mood for literary mystery, like she would definitely be who I would go to. And I'm really hoping she'll release another standalone thriller kind of thing, because that I would definitely give a try. She is very, very talented, um, for sure. So this was a fun video and a successful reading project, I feel like. So I read those three. This also was sort of like week one of Black Aweenathon for me, which technically goes the entire month of October, but I'm basically doing two weeks of it. So this was sort of like week one. Things is mad that I'm sitting in his chair. I bet that's why he's thwarting me with this tripod. Okay, so I read that. What else did I read? Um, oh, I listened to two audiobooks. So I finished Witches, Witch Hunting by uh, Sylvia Frederica, Frederiki, 
which I thought was very thought provoking. It was basically about the correlation between witch hunting crazes in the past and in the present with macroeconomic trends that are impacting kind of like the social, like social and economic position of women. So her kind of hypothesis is the rise of witch hunting in the Middle Ages was correlated to a transition from, um, kind of like feudalism and the position that women had within that kind of economic order to a more capitalistic society that had different roles for women to play um, as there's sort of like this shift away from individual subst subsistence to more like being an employee in a bigger economic order. So like there's less room for you know, kind of wise women who who are like midwives or herb healers or whatever, like there's less room for them to have a normative place within a capitalistic structure. There's also less room, for example, for like widows to have a subsistence living if all of the public land is taken private, which was a part of that transition. Anyway, it was an interesting argument. And basically, she also is talking about like the rise of witch hunting in modern times, and that sort of being potentially like a symptom of sort of like late stage capitalism and a potential shift to something else. So anyway, it was a very interesting, thought provoking book. It makes me want to read more about like sort of the history of witches. I saw a book at my local bookstore that intrigued me, and maybe I will go back and buy that. But I thought that was an interesting audio listen. And then a hit for the month is An Afro-Indigenous History by Kyle Mays. I listened to that on audio and I think I'm going to talk about that at the end of the month. So maybe I'll hold off on talking about it now. There was that. Um, I had... <sighs> I feel like I'm going to talk about Dragon Haven at the end of the month as a surprise, but preview. I'm pretty salty about the way people talk about this book. I've been looking through some reviews of this book on Goodreads. I think that a lot of people are pretty misogynistic in their assessment of this book is like just about relationships or it's YA because they're all young and in relationships. Seems to me like that's a pretty fundamental misreading of the project of this book. And this book like takes all of that in a really harrowing place by the end with Gerd, Gerd, Gerd. So I'm just gonna say that I think people who think that this is just about relationships are really missing the point of this book and that maybe that's indicative of a larger within fantasy fandoms that don't necessarily take women's stories or themes that are traditionally associated with feminine things as seriously as they should. Now there are other things to critique about this book like it's very clearly just sort of like chopped in half from the previous book. I think it was originally meant to be a duology and they broke both books up into two. So that's why there's four of them. That's what I've come to understand. So yeah, you can totally have issues with the pacing of this. I think that's fair enough. And there's some repetition, whatever. Like I see legitimate critiques of this book, but a lot of the reviews seem pretty like they just don't pass the vibe check, I don't think. So yeah, this I'm gonna say is a surprise. So I probably yeah, I'll talk more about this at the end of the month. And then uh, two disappointments, most of both of which I will talk more about in other videos, but just FYI. One is These Toxic Things by Rachel Housel Hall, which is a part of Black Aweenathon, um, the second week that I'm doing of reading books for Black Aweenathon, and this was not my favorite, so I'll talk more about that. Uh, and then, guys, another disappointment that I'll talk more about. I'm afraid to even show you this. <laughs> I think people are gonna be really upset with me. I should preface this before I show this to you by saying it's not the book, it's me and how I've chosen to read this. So I'm gonna say Thunderhead. Okay, qu moving quickly onwards. Okay, so then, okay, I'm looking over here at my list. Is there anything else I can tell you about? I think the only one I can tell you about is The Hacienda by Isabel Cañez. I really like this. I gave this four stars, three and a half, four stars, maybe leaning more towards three and a half now that I've got a little distance from it. What I like about this book is that I like vibes for this kind of horror novel. This is a classic sort of like haunted spooky house type story. It's sort of like, I believe it's been described as Mexican Gothic meets Rebecca. You can very clearly see the influences of Rebecca on this book. I don't think in a bad way, I think in a, a cool way. And the vibe of this creepy rural, like Mexican pl plantation basically, I think is very effective. And that's what I like about this book. I don't think that there's, it's not very memorable. Like that's why I'm like, oh, maybe I should give this a three and a half because I'm already like struggling to remember it. Like I, and I even when I finished it specifically marked the end of it that I'm gonna go back and reread before. <laughs> 
<laughs> before the Blades and Bodice Ripper book club live stream about this book, which is on Bethany's channel. That will be on the 29th in the evening. So just FYI, that is happening. So if you wanna see a fuller discussion, that will be happening on Bethany's channel. But I will just tell you that I don't think that this is super memorable, but I think it's an effective deliverer of the kind of entertainment I look for from this book. So for that reason, I did like it. Um, I believe Liana has already said that she did not like it. So we already have some conflicting opinions. So if you wanna see more, you can come hang out with us then. Okay, and then in terms of what I'm currently reading, the only thing I'm technically currently reading is Dick Fight Island by Ryben Ike. And this is already as bananas as everybody led me to believe. It's pretty fun, it's pretty wild, and I will report back on <laughs> just how crazy this gets. I did enjoy the sort of like Avengers style display of each of the uh, selected representative um, for the competition. So anyway, yeah, currently reading that, having a good time. In terms of what I might read next, this month is pretty well laid out for me in terms of the projects that I'm working on. So like I mentioned, I read these toxic things for Black Aweenathon, and then these are the other four books that I'm planning on reading as a part of that. So I'm gonna read The Year of the Witching by, Al by Alexis Henderson. I am going to read Akata Woman by Nettie Akorfor. I'm going to read The Parable of the Sower by Octavia Butler. And I'm going to read When the Reckoning Comes by LaTanya McQueen. This is horror. This is sort of like sci-fi dystopia. This is fantasy. And this is, I'm not sure if this is actually fantasy, but it's got like fantastic elements, like maybe magical realism is kind of the vibe I've gotten from it. So yeah, that is the plan for my second round of Black Aweenathon. And then for Weekend Ween, which is a weekend long readathon that that Liv from Olivia Reads a Latte and Gabby from Grabby Reads are hosting. Oh, I should mention Black Aweenathon is created by Brie from The Locked Booktician. And she has a bunch of co-hosts, including my friend Ashley from Bookish Realm, bunch of other people. Yeah, so doing that. And then for Weekend Ween, where I'm gonna try to read as many books in those four days as I possibly can, I've got this gigantic stack pulled. And the only things that I know I'm gonna read is that I'm going to read the two bind-ups of Monstrous that I'm behind on because the theme for this weekend ween is Monster Mash. So one of the prompts is to read a graphic novel. I think one is to read a book with a monster on the cover and the other is to read a graphic novel. So this, these address like two of those prompts. And uh, yeah. So I'm definitely gonna read those to catch up. And then I'm going to flip a coin. Probably this is what will happen. I'm gonna flip a coin ah, to address the other prompt um, between The Paul Bearers Club by Paul Tremblay, which is sort of like horror-ish with a vampire, I don't know. And then Daisy Darker by Alice Feeney, which is an isolated close circle mystery. So I'll flip a coin and see what happens here. So those I kind of know for sure-ish. The rest of these, I just grab some like smaller or quicker reads that are mystery, thriller, or horror. So I hope that I get to as many of these as I can. Let's see here. The two that I'm pretty sure will happen, McGlue by Atessa Moffey and Rizzio by Denise Mina, because both of these are very short and they are both historical mystery thriller. So. I think those are pretty safe bets. Uh, and then the rest of these we'll see. We've got The Hollow Places by T. Kingfisher, which is sort of like a turtle fantasy horror from what I understand. A YA closed circle mystery by C.L. Taylor called The Island, which is seven days, six teenagers, one deadly secret, who will escape? So there's that. Then uh, These Fleeting Shadows by Kate Alice Marshall. This is a YA haunted house story, I believe. Actually, I think Leanna was telling me that this is similar in some ways to the Inheritance Games by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. So like maybe that, but a haunted house story. 
Uh, I think the one least likely to happen is probably Twin Spirits by W.W. W. Jacobs because this is a bind up of his short stories and I'm not sure that this is gonna end up working out for that challenge, we'll see. Uh, and then I really would like to read The Haunting of Maddie Claire by Simone St. James just because this is part of Simone St. James's backlist that I keep meaning to get to and just keep not doing. So there's that. So those are sort of like my planned things. Um, I'm way ahead on advanced reader copies right now. If I get a chance, I would like to read How to Sell a Haunted House by Grady Hendrix because that one um, I started and actually quite enjoyed but realized that I needed to like give myself some time to read it. So that might be a good option. Uh, as well as Desperation and Death, I do want to you know, catch up. But I, I've heard, I think I keep not reading this because I've heard it's a heavier topic. Like I've heard that there's some like Jeffrey Epstein type devices in here. And that just sounds like a lot. So I think I keep kind of putting it off for that reason. But there's that. And then I might, I think I'll just probably fill in with some Kindle Unlimited good times. There's a new Michelle Mills out, I know, which I think is like called like, I think it's some sort of alien abduction auction situation. So I might read that. There's a new Honey Phillips series that she's been releasing. And the first one, I think it's called Our Tech, which is a alien sci-fi romance. So maybe something like that. I don't know, we'll see. So a lot of structure. So I probably need to give myself some permission to just sort of mood read within that. That is probably the best recipe for success for me. But I don't know, we'll see how it goes. I feel like this was kind of repetitious for my rest of the year TBR. So I'm sorry if this was boring. I never can tell if I'm being boring or not. I don't know. I feel like I'm just like questioning things too much right now because I don't know, like YouTube. I've realized that the only real social media site where I feel a lot of kind of like formative judgment is YouTube. And it's specifically with the analytics. Like I wish there was a setting where you could stop seeing your analytics because then I would just be having a great time. Like I would just be enjoying the comments because people like have liked the videos and didn't do as well. But like when you log in and it's like, this sucks. It's just hard. <laughs> and I think I'm in, it's like getting into my head, but I need to just like, let that go and kind of get back to basics in terms of I'm making things that I really like and that the people who watch it seem to really like. So that's what's important. It's not my job. This is just a hobby. And YouTube can stop trying to make me judge myself. I would appreciate that. Thank you, Susan. Okay, so anyway, let me know how your reading is going so far. Are you having a spooky reading season uh, like I'm trying to have? I hope so, if that's your thing. Let me know what you thought about any of the books that I mentioned. And yeah, I think that will do it for me. So if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, follow me on the social meds if you are so inclined. I have all that information listed in the description box below. And I think that that will do it. I hope you're having an absolutely lovely day today and I will just talk to you soon.